Right, we need to place the fair leads. So we have two uh, now painted white fair leads that we need to install on the deck. And using the anatomy of the ship, you can place them, um, but you need to be careful. You need to make sure that the photo etch railings also work. Pleased to say um, that when you look at the spacings, um, so this is uh, fret E of the Mark I set, um, railing number five, it's pretty much bang on. So it should start at this point here where the wood uh, deck ends because the railing actually crosses over the anchor at that point. So it should start there and we need to make sure that it is between the two stanchions and it fits pretty much exactly and um, the railing is pretty much bang on to where we want to have it so um, everything is lining up nicely in that process so that's really good that means that we can place this and not have to worry about whether the railing fits so you've got to check that the railing um, um, your railing position and if you need to relocate that even if you think it's slightly off where it should be so that it fits in the railings because we will remove one of the chains in the railing um, to go over that which is how it's done on the actual ship um, so really good news that the MK1 set um, my model and the anatomy ship uh, all seem to be aligned um, so that that couldn't really go better now then, what we do have to do is cut around the fair lead. So let's look at that. So if you look at page 287 on the anatomy of the ship, you'll see um, a close up of the position of the uh, roller fair lead. And what it shows you is that the fair lead is right up on the edge of the uh, the deck um, of this of the ship here like so so that's its position but the wooden deck actually goes around it um, not um, as we have at the moment with the fair lead slightly tilted because it's having to step up onto the wood so we need to cut that little bit of deck out um, so that's what I'm going to attempt to do now. Um, let's see how we get on. So I'm going to go from the corner of the fair lead. And cut that section of deck out. Hoping I've not got the angle too acute there. And then I'll try and do that again. Sorry for fingers. Well, a bit tricky because it wants to move and I don't want it to right, I'm just going to move it out of the way okay I think that's okay so next job is to get the uh, depth right of the amount of deck we're going to cut out I 
we only have one chance. If I mess it up, the deck gets messed up. Right, you understand what I'm trying to do, but I think it'd be better if I could get closer to it without a camera right in my way. So, um, we have that now cut out, and it really does look exactly as it is in the anatomy of the ship, so I'm really pleased with that. Um, you have to be very careful, because if you go too far, that's it, you're stuffed, game over. So, um, it's just a, a tiny fraction that we're taking off. It's literally, what's that, two and a half millimetres maybe. Um, but it does make a big difference to how the ship looks. We're adding detail and realism and I did actually manage to damage both my capstans in the process, the little um, hand uh, ring on the top on both of them came off so I'll have to put them back on. They're not broken, just um, the bond failed. So um, I've got to do now exactly the same on the other side um, and then we can glue them in. Well, the fair leads is probably the most difficult item in that area. Uh, we're now going to work on the um, bollards that need to go in. Um, so we have several of these right up here at the front. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to put the glue into the hole. Um, as a general rule, I find that um, reduces the risk of uh, any glue oozing out. I have test fitted all of these um, beforehand so I know that we've got no fit issues what you're basically doing is pushing the glue down into the hole with the peg so the pegs get in a coating and then when it's making contact uh, it dries so there you go um, and then we've got another couple that go each side here And I am going to put some uh, ropes onto these. See, I said they were all dry fitted. And then for a minute I thought that one wasn't going to go in. Yeah, so because we've got the little area of the deck here um, that shows up the, the um, plug for the hole that shouldn't be there, um, I'm thinking of doing some rope work and we can incorporate the bollards into that as well. Oh, that one doesn't want to go in, that's annoying. Ah, oh, there we go. You have to get it um, dead straight. If it goes in slightly at an angle, it's not going to go in. There we go. Just spotted a little bit of touch up on one of those, but that's not a biggie. We've got to do some uh, painting in this area anyway, with the dark grey on the capstans. Um, so we can do that at the same time. Right, that's those uh, bollards in. And they do have caps on them, which is nice. Um, the next thing we want to put in is the bonnets, which go either side and the bonnet is the thing that the anchor chain um, basically the hood that the anchor chain disappears into um, so yeah and they're called bonnets because they look like old-fashioned um, 18th century bonnets want to make sure that one's straight because I'm not convinced it is and it's not come on I 
there we go now if you can see any glue when you finish this um, simple bit of matte coat will sort it out Okay, I can repair the capstans now we're at that point. Immediately behind the capstans are these two little chain uh, guards and I think they're really there for when they chain a that the anchors are being dropped and the chain is coming through at speed um, to stop it sort of kicking out or what have you so we have those to put into place these are the 3d printed parts and is marked out on the deck exactly where they go and it adds a lovely lovely little bit of detail we'll take uh, we'll bring you in show you a close-up when when the, the items are on happy with them so then we have two little boxes well actually they're quite big boxes that go in place um, just in the middle of the skylights there so I'm not quite sure what they are they have got um, opening hatches on them so whether they were ventilation or stowage boxes of some type I'm not sure but they are both different which, you know, if there were ventilation, you'd, you'd have thought they'd have been both the same or even just joined up. So I suspect there's some form of storage for something or other. Um, and then as we move back, either side of um, Tura Anton, we've got more bollards to put in. So that completes the bollards... Um, the large ballards at the bow section of the ship. We then go down to a smaller ballard and also smaller roller fair leads as well. So the medium sized ones will be the next ones we do. And again, we will have to get our photo etch railings out and just make sure that the distances all work. So um, I'm gonna carry on gluing ballards in and then I'll come back to you uh, when we're doing the um, medium fair leads, which um, again, I think we will be cutting deck for. So we have um, two um, large fair leads to add in and just as before we need to cut out a bit of deck and they are um, positioned um, sort of in between these dashes that we can see where they where the butt joints are so we need to be cutting um, around just as we did before so I'm just gonna put it there cut an angle It is a bit tricky. Make sure I've got that right to the front. Cut an angle. And then we can just join that up, which I'll do off camera because I'm gonna to have to put my head there. So you won't see anything anyway. Okay, we've cut the deck out, so we're ready to put the um, fair lead in. 
So a bit of medium CA glue. I can't remember if that's what I did last time. I don't remember lots of things these days. This is, um, as I'm doing this, it's what, 10.15 uh, on Monday the 26th of August. So those of you that follow my table talk videos know it's my birthday today. And I'm uh, I'm the only one up still at this this time, school holidays and what have you. And what better thing to do on your birthday than to build models? I'm hoping, I sort of know that I've got some more coming later today when everyone gets up, but I have no clue what they are. Other than one of them might be a motorbike, um, which my dad sort of dropped, but I don't know what he's got, so some surprises which is nice okay we'll put these on as well uh, again using medium CA some form of locker I think they're unusual shape though so not quite sure exactly what they are There we go. Um, I'm going to do the other fair lead um, off camera because, well, you know what I'm doing and we'll just get that done. Um, and then that will complete my step six. Oh, no, it won't. I've got, I've got these to add, um, the cable reels. So... They're painted up, they've not been weathered yet, but now there has the one on the stern. So they go in these three places here where you can see those little boxes on the deck. So let's do those while, while you're watching. So I'm simply going to remove them from the masking tape that they were sat on. Right, well, we can start gluing these in now that I've stopped getting texts wishing me happy birthday. All very nice, but don't they know I'm trying to actually video things? Right, that plops in there like so. Make sure that's nice and straight. Yep, that's good. Let's just get that out of the way and we can see what we're doing better. So all I'm doing is dropping it on the surface of my CA which allows me to get a nice even covering on the whole of the base there. So just dip it in basically. Gently though, we don't want glue everywhere. There we go, that's our cable reels on. So I'll do that fair lead, um, and then we have absolutely done all of my step four then. Um, so we'll be moving over the page. And Dealing with my um, step seven. Uh, did I say step four? It's my step six, wasn't it? Trumpeter step four. So more fair leads, more bollards, um, and torpedo storage boxes at the end there. Right, let's crack on with that. So my next job is to drill some holes um, for the location points of some of the things that we're adding at this stage. So I'm going to do that. You've seen me do that before. We talked about that um, earlier on. So I'm going to get the holes drilled. Um, we'll get the parts painted up and then we will come back to you when it's time to start fitting them and you can see that come together. You have to be a little careful with the orientation of these um, torpedo tube storage boxes. Um, they have got a large and thin pin but that's uh, irrelevant when you're drilling through the deck because the, the holes in the deck are all the same size but the doors on the end 
need to be facing towards the bow and then when we put this on we've got to make sure that the back end isn't kicking over where the railing is going to go so we're ready to glue that one on so we'll just put a little bit of glue um, this is uh, again medium CA I'm just putting it in some stitches we don't need to go the full length and then a little bit around the pegs as well like so and then we put that large peg in find that peg at the back and just make sure we've pushed that as far over as we can and that's that in here we have um, an opening to go down into the deck so um, again we need to make sure that we've orientated that correctly and the large gap behind the door um, behind the hatch faces towards the stern so just a little bit of glue in the middle there okay that's nice and easy so I'm gonna do the other side and then we can uh, look at bollards and fair leads well it is um, a lovely Thursday morning we've had a really wet week and it's looking like the f weather's finally broken which is good because later today I'm taking my two daughters clothes shopping in uh, Manchester um, I'm not I am not a big fan of going clothes shopping uh, even for myself but um, I do like a trip to Manchester every now and then um, and we've not been for some some time and we can get on the train in Leyland and arrive at Piccadilly uh, sort of 15 minutes later so that's really good and handy so that's what we do uh, oh, that one's a bit stubborn and dry fitted but using the same bollard and then that one is not quite going down but already has the glue on so let's see if we can get it down there we go yeah that's in so there we go um, what I've decided I'm going to do is fit the um, fit the railings um, as we go um, so we'll be doing that in a moment I'm just going to put the deck fittings on that I can uh, before we have to get to um, putting the railings on and we'll do the fair leads as we put the uh, railings on is my thought process um, we won't put anything obviously silly on that we could uh, knock off like the the uh, track staffs we'll leave them to the end but by putting the railings on um, we can we can do two things we can make sure we've got our fair leads positions are right um, and we can go to weathering the hull any time we like after that that's the one thing that's um, limiting me in terms of finishing the hull um, so yeah that might be um, a nice thing to just have in my back pocket when I when I feel like I'm ready for it just to uh, seal everything and what have you and then we can uh, glaze the portholes um, but right now that is a set of ballards done then we're on fair leads so the rest of my my step seven um, um, I can't do until I put railings in so we'll have a look at fitting the items for step 8 and we have these um, covers which um, I can't put in place until we put the superstructure down because they're going to be placed 
next to the uh, various um, skylights. So I'm guessing they stowed them next to them. They probably, um, although I've got no evidence of this, they probably had some form of storage hook or something so you could slide them down the back. I'm sure they wouldn't have just left them loose. But um, I have no evidence for that, so uh, we'll work that out when we get to it shortly. Right, let's uh, get these little tabs off where we're going to put our large bollards. And we can see, even though the um, hull, uh, the, sorry, the deck is perfectly aligned with where it needs to be, the holes aren't. And that gives me all sorts of problems, especially when the holes are offset because you, you, a drill will always follow the hole. So it's really difficult to, to drill a hole when it's offset. And you can see that the holes, or well, maybe you can't, but the holes are more offset on this side than they are on that side. So I'm just going to change my drill bit and we're going to have a look at opening those up a little bit because even my Remo will follow the hole. Though actually we might be able to do it with the Remo. Let's let's try that first. So I'm just going to get my Remo out. Um, and if we, if we put enough pressure on and just part turn, my cutting blade should... Uh, no, I can't get in deep enough because the uh, plastic lip that the deck sits on is in the way. So the reamer isn't an option. So let me change my drill bit. So I've put my largest drill bit in and I'm just using the flutes to cut one edge. So I'm pressing in that direction and doing a, a quarter to half turn just to align it with that hole and then Try and drill straight down now. Not happy. Right, let's get one of the bollards and see how they fit. Yeah, well it appears it's enough, that's sitting flush on the deck. So I'm gonna do that with all the others and then we can glue them in. Now I'm of the mind of weathering these ballards later on. Um, but if we're putting railings in, we will have to do that as we put the railings in. So a little bit of um, dark iron or something like that on the inside to show where the paint's rubbed and uh, with rope and stuff. Uh, we could possibly put a little bit of um, rust on. Um, being out at sea, these things get, get rusty a lot, but every time you put rope on, that rust is rubbed off, so that they don't really get rusty um, unless they don't get used for a while. Well, if they've been at sea for a little while, they, they won't be used, but I have to be mindful on this build that she's pretty much freshly painted um, at, at this point um, so any weathering is going to be minimal absolutely minimal um, but um, we're still going to have fun doing that anyway but I think yeah I think that's the way forward is a little bit of dark iron which actually will be quite subtle on there So we have some ventilator boxes. There's so, so many different types of ventilator on ships. Always surprises me. Uh, and because we've not drilled the hull, bef uh, the deck beforehand, we're drilling the holes now. Uh, and I've probably said this before, um, but it's so much easier than drilling your holes and then finding that your deck doesn't align. Because as we've already seen, the pre-drilled holes are seldomly perfectly aligning and that's to do with the manufacturing tolerance of the wood deck 
so drilling them out as we go definitely is a tip if you've not worked with wood decks before there we go so that should be okay now so let's just dry fit it get it the right way around what have I done to that seem to have caught my um, reel there so I'll have to repair that in a sec right that's okay let's get this fitted and then we'll get in and do that repair while we're thinking about it so I'm just gonna plop a wee bit of glue in there had a little bit too much on there put that into the hole make sure my orientation is right this time and there we go that's down and in right it's just going to put a little bit of I can see it's broken its bond with the uh, with the CA so I'll just put some more CA back on there and carefully fold that back in so if we're not careful it will snap there we go I think that's okay Ooh, that was a moment, wasn't it? Right, let me get the other holes drilled out and then we can place some parts. So interestingly, as I'm working through drilling the holes, we've got a hole to drill there, but there's nothing over there. So uh, that's a mistake in the deck because this, which fits across there, has two holes. So I think what I'm going to do, rather than trying to randomly drill a hole and, and try and make sure I've got it perfectly straight is I'm just going to uh, nip off the locating lug on this end one um, and then we'll just bob a bit of glue on because it's CA we're not expecting it to move once we've placed it um, it shouldn't be a problem so yeah that's what we're going to do and then all we can do then is locate it in one and make sure it's visually in a straight line uh, but how weird that they didn't put another hole in. So I've uh, finished fitting all the um, little bits and pieces that we'd um, last painted um, uh, along this rear deck area. Um, I've just got the two hatches left to do and I'm finding it easier to um, not drill the holes and just remove the, pe the pegs off the back um, so it's easier to actually position them uh, because the pegs um, are slightly off center on the on the deck when you look at it um, and the result is they're not centered in the actual um, marking out on on the wood deck so plus they don't allow for the um, large peg and the small peg which is done to dictate the direction of the uh, of the wider space at the end there. So basically, um, the stairs would be coming up in that direction, um, and they all run in that same way. Um, and as you can see, the, they're not allowing for a large peg, small peg. So just removing the peg. I think is is uh, both the pegs I think is helpful just make sure you know that you're getting the direction right there we go so that's those on and uh, the thing that's now remaining is 
pretty much the fair leads and I've got some bollards to do. I'll do the bollards off camera um, and then we're going to start putting railings in to space the, um, the fair leads which means that I need to place the lower um, deck sections um, because some of the railings come off from this central point here um, so I need to I need to ensure this all fits anyway which it does really nicely there so with that rear section in um, I can start putting the railings in and give me the spacing for my fair leads so that is not my next job uh, I'm going to finish putting the bollards in uh, and then we've got the um, um, stern capstans to do and um, I need to do the same process I did on the, on the front ones um, so I need to paint the brass in I'm not going to show you that because I showed you that on the front it's exactly the same uh, process one's red one's uh, green so uh, I'm going to start by painting the brass and while the paint's drying on that we can do bollards and then um, I can probably paint the white in and then do uh, railings and uh, capstans and uh, we'll just keep coming back to this every time the paint's dry um, so I'll come back to you next I think uh, when we're looking at railings Okay, so to get the placing right for the fair leads, we're going to do the um, railings. So we're going to just hold them up where they would be, and then I'm going to use um, masking tape to mark the positions of the fair leads so we can then glue them in um, into the right places. Um, then the process will be then that we we are cleaning up these parts, the lower superstructure parts, and placing those so that the railings can then be secured in place. The problem is if we glue them into place now, um, although we could do the stern area, um, uh, once you get close to where it meets with the superstructure, you can damage it when placing the superstructure. So this, this rear piece of superstructure has to be sorted before it's um, um, put into place so anything that we're replacing with photo etch needs to be done any scratch building needs to be done there's modifications to be done because there's, an, there's a, a passage being put in here which doesn't exist and, and needs to be replaced so there's all sorts of little modifications we've got to do before we can put that down so this first section of railing that goes here all the way up to uh, meeting this uh, a hard bulkhead that has to be replaced um, so um, what we're going to do is just hold that first piece up um, which is this one here has a little gap in it um, to allow the um, secondary armament to rotate um, obviously when when these ships were in uh, I, I say obviously a lot of people perhaps don't understand this but ships railings aren't a permanent feature uh, they're collapsible um, and what they would do when they were firing the big guns is they tend to drop the, the railings down and that's why you have these little secondary railings um, which are, uh, are there around the guns so that there's something to stop the shells rolling off the decks and, and possibly getting caught in the propellers or causing damage so uh, I'm, yeah the, the whole point um, of these is to stop people falling off the ship but when the ship's <clears throat> in in action and everyone's at their action stations they are moving around the ship so these can be collapsed of course there's not always the opportunity to drop them down if you're uh, um, taken by surprise um, but that was you when you see them doing training when they're doing gun testing and uh, 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 fire control um, practice and that sort of stuff you'll often see in the photograph that the railings uh, the stanchions have been collapsed uh, down and there's nothing preventing someone <laughs> dropping off the deck if you like so uh, okay so let, gonna measure this um, against there and get the positions when we find the positions we mark them on the side of the hull with a bit of masking tape um, so that we know that the fair leads are in the right place so I'm gonna do that now 
Right, I have checked the position of the fair leads against the railings now and then I've cross-referenced that with the anatomy of the ship to make sure I've not got any fair leads missing, um, which I don't. So they've all been picked up um, by Trumpeter. The positions of the fair leads are fairly accurate. What we're doing with these smaller ones, so the, the middle size and smaller fair leads, is we're not cutting the deck out around them because on the actual ship, they're pretty much the width of the distance between the edge of the, of the ship and the edge of the deck. Now, in this scale, these are actually slightly oversized or the deck is slightly too wide and comes too close, whatever it is. So we shouldn't be showing the deck cut round them. So I don't want to do that. So we're just gonna place them on top. And I've just been looking at whether I need to sand the back edge off uh, to make them level. And to be honest, there's such a slight tilt. It's not visually noticeable. So I'm not going to uh, bother. Um, with these being so fragile and brittle, we could do more harm than good doing that. So um, my plan is just to glue them into place. So again, uh, as I'm normally doing with most of my fittings, uh, I'm using some medium CA just to give me a little bit of a, a strong bond and some drying time. And then we're going to just place it right hard up against the edge of the hull. And I'm just giving the edge of the hull a little tap to make sure it's not overhanging. It's a bit, a bit difficult to see when it's painted um, because it's the same colour as the hull there, but yeah, there we go, that's that one in. And then with these smaller ones, uh, you need to rotate them so that the fair lead um, is towards the back. Um, so it has, um, has a position where it sits at the back edge rather than the front edge, is what we're looking for. Um, and again, just like the medium ones, we're just going to glue them into place um, and they'll straddle a bit of deck and a bit of the uh, and go right up to the edge of the hull. There we go. That's good. Right, I am going to go and carry on doing the fair leads um, and then I'll come back to you uh, with my next step, which is probably looking at the um, lower superstructure and doing some of the photo etch and the clean up and understanding what we need to be doing with that next. So we're actually on the instruction step seven, which I've broken down into four separate steps. Um, so we're gonna have a look at this one. Um, and I also have to look at what the implications are. So from um, a kit perspective, we've got four parts here. But from an aftermarket perspective, we've got a fair bit more because we've got all sorts of photo etch to put on here so this is why we break it down because each one of these steps becomes infinitely larger when we look at it so we start with the plastic parts um, and we can start with q2 and cleaning it up before we even get to that and having a look at what the implication is in terms of photo etch we also want to look at our references and see if there's any scratch building required such as cabling or hose reels and the like. So um, whilst I've got paint drying and can't install parts, that's what I'm gonna do. Now, I'm recording this in the sequence that I'm building it. You might see it in a slightly different sequence. So hopefully you've just seen the last steps uh, come together and we're about to start steps and step nine. So let's do that. So we fished the part out and we've got the uh, MK1 instructions out. And what they do is they replace these um, plastic triangular lumps uh, because they should be um, open. 
um, they're sort of sheltered um, uh, and open at the end so what we do is we make up some photo etch to replace them um, we've got some hand irons um, which replace the, the ones that are on the side here um, and in addition we're going to drill open the uh, the portholes here uh, I'm also going to put some photo etch uh, browsing, uh, browsing rings on them um, I'm also going to have a look at whether we've got um, watertight doors to replace the, what the these ones here if we have we will do that um, because I'm not seeing that any of the doors are shown as being replaced but I'm sure we've got some somewhere um, then uh, and that's without looking at the the references to see if there's anything else that should go on there now uh, there's also a little rail that goes around the front um, and that's before we even think about decks and stuff that's just to get us to this modified ready for painting before we build on it and as you can see this there's, there's other things as well um, that would would put on later on in that build process um, now my rule of thumb with photo etch is you don't remove the parts that you're going to replace until you've built the photo etch and you know that you've you've well not fluffed it <laughs> and it's usable so that's my rule of thumb uh, but what we can do is we can clean this up to start with and drill out these because at the very least we're going to be doing um, doing that um, and then we'll sand off the hand rungs when we come to get rid of the molded in um, eyebrows and when we're ready to remove all of these so the next thing I want to do is fish out the uh, photo etch and have a go at, um, at folding it and making sure we've got that right so let's have a look at that so for those of you that might have started following um, this build but haven't seen other builds that I've done on the channel um, this is my uh, photo etch removing tool which is uh, an X-Acto number 11 blade with the point snapped off um, and then um, ground to make a chisel tip which means I can go in directly above the part and cut the tab and it minimizes the amount of uh, times that I have to clean the tab off because I can get right up to the edge there so it's my preferred way of, mo uh, of removing photo etch people have all sorts of different methods different blades different techniques some people even use scissors this is the most precision way I have found um, and it works for me right so once you've removed your photo etch part it's always worth just checking that you got nice and close and if you didn't um, you need to just deal with it so just make sure it's nice and smooth if you don't do that you're going to cause yourself a problem when you try and fit it. And I often see wonky photo etch and that's why. Okay, that is now perfect. Now I could probably do these with the Tamiya pliers. Let's have a look. Yeah, Tamiya plier would do it, but I don't like the fact that they're not straight um, and they're not flat. So I'm actually going to use my very trusty bending tool um, I absolutely love this tool um, it's it's my favorite I've got I've got a couple of hold and folds uh, and that type of thing but this is quick and efficient and um, I love it I've been using it for several years now maybe six something like that and it's still my favorite tool so there we go it was that easy so that wasn't difficult at all so let's just get our tweezers and have a quick inspection of the part there we go, slightly over folded. 
see if we can get that to focus. Uh, I mean, it's okay, but this this arm is in just a little bit too much. We can correct that. In fact, we've just corrected it now. So that will go there and replace that plastic one, which will give us a nice open opening and will look far better. So I'm happy with that. So I don't think I'll have an issue doing all of these. So um, we're going to clean all this up and um, and get it ready for all the photo etch. All about having the right tool for the job. You'd be here forever with a sanding stick. You want something a bit more rigid. Because they are proper chunky um, sprue gates on here. Uh, which were taken off quite clumsily in the factory. So... Often I find there's issues with the um, seating of these parts and um, just going over them just helps sort them out. Oh. What I'm going to do is we're just going to go over the whole thing and make sure it's nice and level. that feels good and I can see I can't see any shiny plastic so I know we've sanded everything so I'm happy with that um, so what we're going to do is we're going to sand all these parts up and then we'll wash the part um, once everything's sanded off I need to build these um, little boxes which actually are sort of uh, triangular parts to go on I've had a look at the photo etch it doesn't look overly complex so I think it'll be well, it looks quite simple actually so I think it won't be a problem let's just take that seam down and following it round there's another mould seam here and then one on the front here Okay, and now we can just follow up with a sponge. There we go. That's a 1000. And then we'll go in the opposite direction. This is a 1500. always difficult when you've got a, a small area to go in the opposite direction and every time we sand this the area we're sanding widens that's how we sort of blend it in make it not visible And then finally we can polish it up. There we go. Yep, happy with that. That's really nice. 
So, okay, that is that uh, Bru uh, what was the number B gun called? I forget now. Bruno? Bruno. That's the Bruno uh, emplacement cleaned up. Thanks for watching. Please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't done so. It's free and that way you won't miss my first impressions, my tool reviews, my product reviews and any of my builds, um, including wooden model kits as well as plastic. It's all free and if you'd like to support the channel, you can hit my PayPal link in the text below. Uh, every pound goes straight into the channel uh, to keep the cameras rolling and to do more fun stuff for you to watch.